Well, hello, vinyl community. It's Bill here again. And I hope you're all doing well out there in VC YouTube land on the interweb, as Nick's Vinyl Buddy says. So today I'm going to be doing something that I've been thinking about for a wee while, and that's uh, 10 commandments for building a record collection or 10 commandments for record collectors. Now, a while ago, there was a thread called If I Were a God, and you to answer a few questions. Can I just emphasize that uh, these 10 commandments are a bit of fun? So I hope I'm not being blasphemous or disrespectful to anybody's religion, etc. But yeah, it's, it's maybe 10 rules, but yeah, 10 commandments is more gravitas, let's say. So uh, I didn't go up to a mountain. There's no crack of thunder. Uh, this is the sort of tablet <laughs> that we'll be working from. Is it one like this? Tablets, modern day tablets. So yeah, I don't want to offend anyone, uh, but uh, I hope you'll uh, f find something of interest and maybe there'll be a, a debate uh, when we get to commandment number eight. And at that point, I'll, I'll maybe suggest that there could be a thread based on this, but let's get started. So, First commandment, thou shalt set a monthly or weekly budget and stick to it. Now, I don't know how your wallet is, but uh, this wallet has got a very nice note inside it. One billion pounds. No, not million pounds, one billion dollars. Now, I don't th think my my weekly or monthly budget's going to be anywhere near uh, that number of zeros uh, at the, the end of the 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 main figure. Uh, but uh, and I'm always intrigued as to what people's uh, monthly budgets are and uh, more some people are richer than others and have more disposable income they maybe don't have uh, kids that uh, they they have to provide for etc uh, yeah and lots of things can use up our money but yeah I think our our first commandment should be thou shalt set a monthly or weekly budget and stick to it Next up, I've got Thou shalt support all your local record stores, including those chains. So one of the record stores in the Aberdeen area is uh, Red Robin Records and Vinyl Cafe. And there was a post on Facebook a few weeks ago. Uh, and uh, the wonderful owner, Nick, there was uh, looking for, let's say, a little bit more support for his business. And uh, he did a great response. So more people are going into the cafe to, to buy a, a bacon roll and a nice cup of coffee and have a browse through his uh, bins, which are full of great vinyl. and. We want to support these local stores because this great establishment of Scottish record stores, Groucho's in Dundee, is sadly no more. So we don't want other record sellers going the same way. I was lucky enough to be in New Zealand, in Auckland on holiday, pre-pandemic, I think it was, 
and they had a, a great uh, local store called Real Groovy. Uh, there's lots more in Aberdeen, lots more in Scotland, and yeah, we should all support those record shops that are close to us. And that uh, includes those that are part of a, a, a big chain, because if you don't support them, those branches of that big chain may disappear. Now, commandment number three, thou shalt not drink and browse Amazon, eBay or Discogs. Uh, one of the inspirations for uh, this video was, and I'll put a link uh, to it below, was a uh, a pair of videos by uh, from a channel called Me, Myself and My Vinyl. And I'm trying to remember the name of the chap. I think I think it was Mike, but I'm not sure. Uh, he his first video was uh, I Need Your Help. I think he got about over 4000 uh, views of that video. But yes, he'd been overwhelmed by his uh, record collection and organizing it and knowing how many copies of records he had, etc. And uh, that uh, it was it was quite harrowing to watch, but there's been a one follow up and I think there'll be another follow up uh, in a few weeks or months showing how he's got on top of his record collecting habit. Uh, and getting more organized, etc., and hopefully having more fun with his record collection. But one of the things he said was that he sometimes uh, will have a, a few drinks and then starts browsing. And before you know it, he's bought another handful or more records. So that's uh, that, that's not good. Uh, I've heard uh, for more uh, sort of shopping on your mobile phone that people just uh, maybe when they're in their beds etc or they're, they're slightly bored they start browsing and buying things on impulse so yeah let's encourage members of the vc to be more careful with their purchases so commandment number three thou shalt not drink and browse any of these record selling platforms more well equally important is commandment number four is thou shalt not exceed your storage capacity uh, my, my friend dale at gatefold gatefold 33 showed this uh, on a thread about uh, you know the direction our record collections are going in and he used this one in search of space so space to hold your records i see all these uh, different well i see on uh, some social media platforms people asking for advice from the, the best uh, storage cabinets and yeah milk crates are mentioned etc etc but yeah and uh, make sure you've got uh, sturdy shelves or cabinets etc and uh, don't overburden them remember the laws of physics and uh, structures etc but uh, well yeah e equals mc squared doesn't quite come into it but yes there are are a massive records that you have to uh, look after. So, yeah, uh, you don't want to get into a situation where the, or maybe you do, where your collection is taking over the whole house. I think I saw some collection, I think it was for matchbox cars or something like that, die cast models, and part of the collection was even in the bathroom. So, yeah, we know not to keep records in the bathroom. This next one's very important. 
Thou shalt not covet the collections that you see on the vinyl community via the YouTube window. Yeah, coveting is not not a, a good route to go down and it can be bad for your mental health, etc. But yeah, I look at Mazzy's collections, I've seen other ones that are thousands and thousands of uh, vinyl records or CDs, etc. You think, wow. You think, look at that collection. And then you think, ah, how often does he he pull out that particular record and listen to it? But yeah, that's that's possibly a different thread. So number five, thou shalt not covet the collections that you see on the vinyl community channels. you like this one. <laughs> Maybe you would. Thou shalt keep a record of your actual listenings to albums. I think there's been a, a well, there was that great thread went viral about the 10 records you listen to the most. And some people have spreadsheets and they can tell you exactly which artists, which LPs, which singles they've listened to the most in their entire, I was going to say adult life, but yeah, teenage years, etc. But yeah. But I think it is useful to know the records that you are enjoying. And when, if you need to do a purge because your records won't fit on the, the shelves that you have available, then it would be good to know the, the records that you really, really, really want to hang on to. Number seven, commandment seven. Thou shalt not flip records. This is something I've never done. I don't think I've had the disposable income to, to buy records on this basis to then hoard for a wee while, make sure the value is going up and then sell on. Uh, I heard Mazzy speaking about uh, a record, uh, I think it was a McCartney. There was only th uh, 333 limited edition and he bought it for, yeah, I think it was a bit 20, well, less than $100. And then he sold it for I think it was about two thousand uh, and x hundred uh, dollars, but he says generally he doesn't uh, do that. Uh, I think it's well, seems to be a thing around record store day, or maybe Taylor Swift albums, but yeah, uh, I think it's better to leave those records in the rack so that somebody else can get them and enjoy them at the at the proper price, not the overly inflated price. Right, this next commandment is commandment number eight. And this is the one that I think could make a good thread if you feel so inclined. So we maybe call the thread uh, Commandment 8. But Commandment 8 is, Thou shalt own at least five albums from the following. So I've pulled out, well, I think, I think it's maybe about 30 albums. And I've got a cassette, because a cassette is part of a record collection. So a record can be a CD can be a cassette. I guess it can be a file on your computer. I don't think something that's in your streaming library counts, but we'll, we'll see. But I'm, I'm speaking about physical format records. It could even be something on reel to reel, but yeah. I'm going to quickly show these albums and yeah, I want you to have a list of at least five of the following. 
some people would say, no, it needs to be 10, it needs to be 20, it needs to be the whole lot. But uh, I'm not taking these out of the, the dust sleeves, but right, quickly got to show these without, without too much commentary. This would be uh, one of the first I think you should have. But for these compilation records, I would allow you any compilation by the great Buddy Holly, and the same is true for some other in this show and tell. Sun collection. I want to say something about this. This is uh, one of, I think, two Dylan albums I have in vinyl. I've got quite a lot of the 60s ones and the Time Out uh, one. And there's uh, one around the 90s as well uh, that I have in my uh, collection. But I've only got two Dylan on vinyl. This is an early... Uh, part of my collection anyway, the freewheeling Bob Dylan, a great album. But yeah, wonder, word of warning, I, I haven't got a commandment about this, but completists, completists be aware, be, be aware, completists be very wary of choosing an artist or band that you want to be complete on. Because that, you know, <laughs> Certainly eat up your mon monthly budget. I could also say that there, there could be a, a commandment 11 about ensure that you have, you know, all these different genres, subgenres. Gotta have some soul. I think you should have in your collection some of the unusual packaging that we find. I think this is that's true of this uh, next one as well. I'll take it out to the sleeve. This has got the, the die cut. Great album, this. Yeah. What I'm also saying is uh, don't get hung up on the original pressing, uh, get any pressing, have it in colour vinyl, don't worry if there's not a, uh, some someone's underwear included or not, you know what I mean. I'm going to say something about this as well. This is part of uh, uh, the box set, uh, and it's a fabulous uh, box set. But do you really need every outtake that uh, a band has uh, made? 
wasn't the fact that they didn't make the, the final version of the record enough? Or do you want your collection to have all these deep cuts and the history of what went on in that recording studio back in the mists of time? This one is the mono, but there's the stereo, there's the, yeah, remastered, etc. Should I say, thou shalt have this in your collection? This is a great uh, record to have for uh, any record collector. This is the one where you put the the needle on the inside of the record on one side and it uh, plays out the way. It's got uh, holographs uh, of angels spinning on it. It's uh, got tracks under the label. If you're a vinyl collector, is this really essential or is it a gimmick? One with actual zip. And this is a I think a 50th anniversary one with the uh, remastered Giles Martin uh, and it's got uh, alternate versions on the second disc. I haven't shown any with uh, colour vinyl, there might be some colour vinyl in there, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Are some of these variations or pressings just money grabs? Let's uh, let's see. So I, I don't know how many records that was, but my commandment number eight is thou shalt own at least five of those albums. And yeah, I'd like a, a it'd be great if uh, we could start a thread and show, you know, a set of albums that you command people to have at least five uh, copies of and that includes you know various physical formats cd cassette or or vinyl and th this one is yeah I hesitate to, to do this one, but I think it is important. Thou shalt stop or pause collecting if ever the collecting stops being fun. This was uh, something that uh, I think people in the responses to uh, me, myself and my vinyl uh, we're saying, yeah, if it stops being fun, if you start feeling overwhelmed by it, then take a break. You know, uh, don't buy anything for for a month, two months, three months. Uh, just give yourself a break from it. Uh, there's, uh, uh, I think it's, yeah, and I'm not uh, comparing our vinyl habits to, to gambling, but there's uh, a gambling slogan uh, that uh, all these betting sites saying uh, if it stops being fun stop so similar message here and then i am going to finish up with commandment 10 thou shalt not listen to an opinionated old fuddy-duddy from scotland who thinks he knows all about record collecting. It is vitally important that you build your own record collection, have your own nooks and crannies of, uh, of the collecting uh, journey. You should plow your own furrow. And yeah, uh, don't let anybody else tell you what you can and can't do with your record collection.
So I hope you found that interesting. Yeah. Uh, put some comments uh, below if you uh, have some alternative commandments. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a commandment eight. Thou shalt own at least five of the following albums. That's been fun for me. <laughs> I hope I haven't been too preachy and uh, that you, you say, oh, Bill, you've gone uh, way overboard there. But yeah, I think there's uh, uh, some good things to, to be aware of uh, in those Ten Commandments for a record collector.